Hello crafty friends! My name is Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. Today I'm going to be making a wreath card using some accent stamps from the Not Too Shabby Farmhouse Christmas set. And guess what? We won't be needing any special templates. I'm going to show you how to make your own. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. When I first saw the new Farmhouse Christmas stamp set from Not Too Shabby, I knew that some of these images would be perfect to make a wreath. Now I myself do have the Gina K Designs wreath builder templates and let me tell you if you have these this is so much easier to use. But I know not everybody does so I wanted to give you another option. And now the cool thing about this is we can make it in lots of different sizes. So that's what I'm going to show you today. To accomplish this without the wreath builder templates, these are the supplies that I'll be sharing with you. I cut a piece of cardstock to three and a half inches square. For the wreath builder templates, they come in three and three quarters and four inches. So I'm just going to show you how you can adapt that and still use the same idea. Now I will be using my Misty. Um, you probably do need a stamp positioner for this. You could try to rotate and eyeball it just on the template we're going to make, but it definitely is easier with some kind of stamping platform. I also got out a pencil so I can make some marks and a piece of graph paper. Once again, plain printer paper is okay to use if that's all you have, but this is going to be easier to make sure we get everything straight and centered for our template. Now as we go along in the video and I add more products and tools, I will be sure to let you know, but as always, if I leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! So I'm going to get started by cutting down my piece of graph paper to just a little over 6 inches by 6 inches. The next step would be to cut your piece of cardstock to whatever size you want your wreath. I did already do that and again mine is 3.5 inches so it's just a little bit smaller than the options you have if you have the wreath builder templates. For the next step, you'll want your pencil and your piece of cardstock you're going to stamp onto. And I would suggest putting the side that you want to stamp onto down when you do this next step in case you would get any pencil markings on this, the, front, the front side. So what you're going to do is just center your cardstock in your graph paper. And this is one reason why graph paper is helpful because you can make sure to get it straight across and you can see more of the center. But again, you could just use regular typing paper if you want. You might just want to add a ruler. Now what we're going to do is go and trace around the outside edges of our square. I just do this gently just so I don't mark up the cardstock. Now you can go back in and darken those lines so they're easier to see. And again, later we will use the actual grid for placement, not really these lines, so they don't have to be perfect. Now to get the part where you turn, you're going to want to turn your cardstock 90 degrees. And now we need to get it centered in this area at that turn. Again, the grid paper is super, super helpful for this. So this will be, the top is three squares up from the side in all of the directions. And then we're going to do the same thing to gently trace around it. Now this one you might want to go ahead and do a little darker since you don't have lines to follow like on the first one. Now I'm going to go ahead up here and write three and a half inches. So if I want to use this later, I know what size cardstock I will need. 
So now we're going to go ahead and get this put in our misty and get started stamping. I did mention earlier that you can do lots of different sizes. The only thing that's going to be holding you back is the size of your misty. So mine, I could go up to like a six and a half inch piece of grid paper, which would allow me maybe four and a quarter inch wreath. If you have one of the big scrapbooking ones, you could go larger. You can also go smaller as well. So what I want to do now, just to make sure this is going to stay in place, I'm going to add some adhesive. Now I don't want this to tear when I peel it up later and it is kind of thin paper. So I'm going to take a little tack here. Now I'm going to make sure my mouse pad is all the way down in the corner and I'm just going to put this all the way down in the corner as well. You could always use some painter's tape on this. That is another option, but I think this is going to work for us today. One thing I did forget to mention earlier is when you go to line up your stamps onto your template, it might be helpful to find the center point. So this is 14 inches long. So I'm going to go down seven and over seven. And just make a circle there and that way I know where the center is to help me line up my stamps later. For the inks today I'm going to be using light medium and dark spruce from Gina K Designs. I just want my wreath to be mainly greenery and we will add some gold accents later on. Because I have put my center mark on the grid paper we need to set up our stamps before we put our cardstock over there. The first stamp I'm going to use is this one right here, and it's going to be kind of the main one in the background of the wreath. Since I have that center point, I know that I can't start it down here, otherwise the wreath won't go together correctly. So I want to kind of stay above it, but still stay in the confines of my square here you'll kind of start to learn like how to set the wreath builder up. And if you buy the actual wreath builder templates, they come with this inner part that helps you line stuff up. It has all those circles around the center point. I'm gonna pick that up with the door of my Misty. And now I'm gonna put my piece of cardstock in there, making sure the side I want to stamp on is facing me. We're gonna start in the square position and I'm going to hold this down with my Misty Magnet. You might want to hold it down with two just in case it comes up, but if you've used your stamps already, it shouldn't stick and make the cardstock come up. I'm going to start with the light spruce for this. And now I'm going to rotate it to the diamond outline. Once again, hold it down with my magnet and then I'm going to ink up that stamp and stamp it again. Now you're just going to keep moving it to the next location on your template and stamping. This farmhouse Christmas stamp set is part of Not Too Shabby's newest box of the month from November 2022. As of time of this voiceover, there were a couple handfuls left, so I will make sure to link it below. In this box, you get two stamp sets, two paper pads, two packages of ephemera, and some shaker bits. It is definitely worth the value, so I hope you'll check it out. Once you have finished all eight turns, You'll put your cardstock back in the starting position at a square and you'll see here how nicely that stamped all the way around and you might start to see our wreath start forming. Now I'm going to clean off the stamp and get the next one ready. For the next stamp, I'm going to move to this open leaf one here and I will be using the medium spruce ink. 
since I already have the wreath started, I am going to put my next stamp down just right on here to get an idea of how it will look with the rest of the images that are already on there. So instead of starting like I did originally with this off the graph paper and lining it up, I would really have no idea now where this would land on the final piece. So that's why for this next one, we will start with our cardstock in place. I did start this one up a little bit further because later we're going to cut this in half and some of that middle is going to be hidden. So it's okay that it doesn't start closer down here to the center. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the new stamp and the medium spruce ink. While I work on this next stamp, I thought it would be a good time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions that we can get to know each other a little bit better. Today I would like to know, have you ever used a wreath building template? Whether it was one you made yourself, kind of like mine, or a store bought one. You can answer in that comment section below, and don't forget to leave the hashtag, hashtag QOTV somewhere in there so I know that you've answered and would like me to see it. I have used both store bought and homemade templates, and I actually did a four on Friday, maybe last year, where I showed different ways to use it. So I will be sure to include that video in the description box below. All right, those eight were done. I'm going to once again do the same process, get the stamp cleaned off, get the new one set up. And for this, I'm going to use this solid one that is very similar to the outline one that we just used. And now I have that finished greenery wreath. Now you could definitely always add colors. I have in the past done some embossing, but I usually do a couple, you know, maybe two, three stamps at a time, just so I know that the ink is still wet to get the powder. But the possibilities are really endless, and you can look at your stamp sets in a new way now. Look at those smaller accent images that kind of help fill in the stamp sets and see if you could create your own wreath. While I still have out my stamp positioner, we're going to go ahead and get the sentiment stamped. For that, I'm going to be using this Joy stamp set here. I thought that the wreath for the O went well with that background wreath that we just created. Now I will be stamping this in Versamark and heat embossing it with Detail Gold Embossing Powder. You'll want to make sure when you remove your template, if you want to use it again, that you do it very carefully. And hindsight 2020, I probably should have just used painter's tape because now wherever I put this, it's going to stick a little bit. But you could always put it on some parchment paper or wax paper and then save it somewhere, maybe with your other stencils. I cut my piece of cardstock to one and a half inches tall and for now I just left it at whatever length my scrap was and I'm going to stamp the sentiment centered on this piece. Since I want my wreath to fill more of a rectangle area, we are going to cut this in half. And I know that it sounds scary after you just spent all that time, but believe me, it's gonna look super cute in the end. Since this is three and a half inches tall, I'm gonna cut it at one and three quarters inches. Now let's get this card put together. Off screen, I did cut my sentiment 
and a scrap of green cardstock to three and a half inches wide so the green has a mat at the top and bottom of it and I also made a top fold fresh asparagus card base and I cut a piece of gold mirror cardstock to three and three quarters by five inches. I'm going to put this down so there are even borders around the outside edges and do the same thing to the second half but on the opposite end. And now this will cover up the opening in the wreath. I do want to add a little dimension to my card so I am going to use some foam tape to pop this up. Now you could definitely at this point add some accent colors like maybe with some red gems but for me I'm gonna leave it just like this but I am gonna decorate the inside a little bit and I'll show you the finished card here in just a second. If you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card and that hack on how to make your own wreath builder template, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.